You've probably heard about the deal with coffee cups. It's been a big thing in the news and in the media since it was uncovered that nearly all of the 2.5 billion coffee cups that we use in the UK every year weren't being recycled because of a thin plastic lining inside the cup that they use to stop the coffee seeping through the paper. This obviously generates a huge amount of waste, but since the spotlight was turned on the cups, there have been huge advances, like an increase in the amount of reusables that we're using, as well as new designs of paper cups. In this video, we want to delve deeper into the world of cup recycling, finding out how sustainable the process is, how it works, and finding out how many times that you need to use your reusable cup to make it the more sustainable choice. In the last couple of years, reusables have gone from being used one in every 400 times we buy a drink to one in every 25 times we buy a drink, which is amazing. There have been some huge leaps, but there's still a lot of work to do. The first thing that we want to know is how are paper cups actually made? And that journey all starts off in Finland. We are here in a forest in Finland to learn a little bit more about how paper cups get made. I know it might be strange to see trees getting cut down and a forest being felled like this. And the reality is that this is just how stuff gets made and not just coffee cups, but anything that you use that's made out of paper or wood. So juice cartons, timber in your home, your newspaper, all comes from a place like this. The bigger trees that you can see behind me will be timber for houses. They've grown for about 70 to 80 years. The smaller trees are used to make things like paper and coffee cups and cupboard. What we need to do is firstly make sure that the forests are being managed sustainably and then we need to make sure that when we do use something that's made out of wood we make sure that it gets recycled or at least gets as long a life as possible. This forest is sustainable because there's a whole host of legislation and certifications that controls what they do. They only have really small lots because a lot of Finnish forests are privately owned, so they're only cutting small bits at any one time. They also plant more trees than they cut down and they leave the forest for about 70, 80, 90 years before they come back and chop anything down. After the wood pulp gets turned into cupboard, it then gets sent to Gosport, which is in the south of England, to be turned into cups for most of the major UK brands. Then the cups arrive in store to be filled with your favourite drink. At the moment, a lot of the cups that we use don't get recycled because they need to go through a specific process that separates the plastic lining from the cardboard and there are only a couple of places in the UK that can do this. So to get them recycled, we need to collect all the cups and make sure they're sent there. Essentially, if you put your coffee cup in a normal recycling bin, it probably won't end up where it needs to go and it might end up contaminating the rest of the recycling. We've put some special coffee cup collection bins in place in Leeds where 600,000 coffee cups have already been recycled and we're hoping to roll this out to 10 more cities so that we can recycle even more. If you can't find anywhere to recycle a coffee cup near you, never fear. In most major cities, you can take your coffee cup into any Starbucks store to be recycled and lots of other brands have their own recycling schemes which I will put in the description below. Some of the paper cups that get recycled end up in Cumbria, where they get broken down into pulp to turn into things like bags and tissue paper. We are here in the Lake District. Behind me is the final part of the process, which is the James Cropper factory. Here, they take all of the cups that you've used and they recycle them into brand new products. We're going to go and find out how it works. So the process works by bringing in these cups that you can see behind you, and we feed them up onto a conveyor belt. Um, bale by bale, around 500 kilos at a time, and then they, they feed up the conveyor belt and then into a, a pulper. So then you start to get separation between the fibre and the plastic, and then we can essentially float away the plastic, and then the fibre can go forward to make paper. Recycling your coffee cup dramatically lowers the carbon footprint of what you're using, but how does this compare to a reusable cup? A standard plastic keep cup would need it to be used 24 times in order to outweigh the carbon footprint of production. 
Whereas if you use a steel coffee cup, that needs to be used about 130 times. And the reason that we're talking about this is because reusables are an incredible option. They're really environmentally friendly, but if you've bought a reusable in order to be more sustainable and it's sitting lowly in your cupboard, it could end up having a higher environmental impact than using a paper cup. So it's really important to choose your cup well and then make sure you use it as often as you can. So there you have it. That is the life cycle of a paper cup. If you use a paper cup, the best thing that you can do is make sure that it gets recycled. And if you decide to use a reusable, then shop around. Pick one that you love and that you're going to use again and again. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. And that's the end of the episode. To find out more and to get inspired, head to our website www.hubbub.org.uk where you'll find loads of top tips to give you the spark to do things differently. Tune in for the next episode and come and join the Hubbub.